Hello, Abnormal Investigations. Got another encounter for you. But before we get into that, I would like you all to uh, say a little prayer for New Mexico. Um, they're going through a big thing right now. And uh, as you know, Brooks, she lives in the town that was affected. So uh, prayers to her for sure. If you have not subscribed to this channel, it doesn't cost you a thing. And I'd like to invite you to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and select all guys so you get all of our latest content. we got a lot coming and boots on the ground. I've got a good video that was sent in. This one comes from Ohio, as it says, and it's a rather dark one. Uh, involves, I believe, what is a dog man. So, let's get into this encounter. I grew up listening to my grandfather's stories about the land. How he tilled the soil, planted the seeds, and watched the corn grow tall and strong under the Ohio sun. His farm was a pride and joy, and I could see the love in his eyes when he talked about it. And of course, all of us grandkids, we had a lot of memories there. Hide and go seek, homemade ice cream, grandma's fried chicken, etc. As a child, I spent countless hours exploring the fields, chasing after butterflies, and playing hide and seek among the corn stalks. My grandfather would laugh and scold me, saying, Don't trample on the crops, kiddo, but he'd always smile and ruffle my hair happy to have me by his side. Grandpa didn't have too many rules that us kids couldn't break and get away with. Now as I look out at the fields, I realize that my grandfather's legacy is more than just a patch of land. It was a tradition, a way of life that's been passed down through generations. I'm proud to be a part of it, to carry on the family name and tend to the land that's been in our family for so long. When I think about my grandfather's stories, I remember the way he'd talk about the magic of the earth, how it could produce such beauty and bounty if you treated it with respect and care. I feel that magic still, every time I plant a seed or watch a new shoot burst forth from the ground. It's a reminder that our connection to the land is deeper than just ownership. It's a sacred trust, a responsibility to preserve and protect this precious resource for future generations. Grandpa always told us that we should always respect the land for our generations to come. But something would ruin the peace we had on the farm. This breaks my heart to tell you this part of the story, Mike. I wish it ended with a happy ending. It was a typical summer evening when my grandfather disappeared. He had finished his chores and was sitting on the porch watching the sunset. I remember walking out to join him, and we sat together in comfortable silence listening to the crickets and the rustling of the corn and the leaves. But as the stars began to twinkle in the sky, my grandfather suddenly stood up and said, I need to go check on something in the fields. I offered to go with him, but he waved me off saying he'd be back soon. That was the last I ever saw him. At first we thought, he might have gotten lost or injured in the fields. We searched all night, calling out his name, scouring every inch of the farm. But as the days went by, there was no sign of him. Strange things started to happen around the farm. Tools would go missing and strange symbols would appear in the dirt. The corn plants began to wither and die as if something was sucking the life out of them, but we knew it was just because we couldn't care for them the same way Grandpa did. We wasn't watering them and tending them as he would. And then there were whispers, faint, eerie whispers that seemed to come from the fields themselves. They were speaking a language I couldn't understand, but it sent shivers down my spine. I knew something was terribly wrong. My grandfather had vanished, and the land itself seemed to be alive, watching me with an unblinking gaze. I had a heaviness on me when I was outside. I felt scared all the time and like I just wanted to run. I felt like I was trapped in a nightmare with no escape from the darkness that had consumed our farm. My mom was skeptical at first, but my grandmother was adamant. She said that Grandpa had been seeing these creatures for weeks before he disappeared. He described them as tall, with fur that seemed to shift at the color of the light, green and sometimes gold. At first we thought it might have been coyotes or wolves, but my grandmother was insistent that these were no ordinary animals. 
She said that Grandpa had been fascinated by them, almost obsessed, and that he had been spending more and more time in the fields trying to get a closer look. I remember feeling a chill run down my spine as my mom and I talked about this. We didn't know what to make of it, but we couldn't shake the feeling that something strange and sinister was at work. And then there were the footprints. Giant prints sunk deep into the earth. They were canine prints, and as if something heavy had been walking through the fields. They were unlike anything we'd ever seen before, and they seemed to lead off into the darkness. As if whatever made them had walked toward the creek into the corn. We knew that we had to investigate further. We couldn't just sit back and do nothing, not when our grandfather was missing and strange things on the farm were happening. So we decided to follow the footprints to see where they led and to try to uncover the truth behind Grandpa's disappearance. We never turned him up. There was a search for him. Search and rescue never found him either, Mike. But we thought maybe the neighbors knew something. Maybe they was having trouble too. So we went from door to door asking our neighbors if they'd seen or heard anything strange. But every time we were met with tight-lipped silence, it was as if they were afraid to speak. Afraid of what might happen if they revealed too much about this unknown creature of the field. One neighbor, old Miss Jenkins, looked at us with a mixture of fear and pity in her eyes. She leaned in close and whispered, don't go poking around in things you don't understand. Then she quickly shut the door, leaving us standing on the porch, wondering what the hell did that mean. It was clear that our neighbors knew something, but they weren't talking, and that only added to our frustration. We were so worried. We felt like we were on our own, facing some unknown threat that no one else seemed willing to acknowledge. As the days went by, the strange occurrences on our farm only intensified. The whispers in the fields grew louder and the symbols etched in the dirt seemed to pulse. We knew we had to keep searching for answers, no matter how dangerous it might be. I mean, my God, our grandpa was missing. It was weeks later after the search parties had given up and the authorities had closed the case that we finally found out what happened to grandpa. A fisherman discovered his remains downstream in the creek, tangled in a mess of branches and leaves. The police said it was an accident. That Grandpa must have wandered into the creek and gotten swept away by the current. But we knew better. We knew that something sinister had taken him, something that didn't want us to find him. The funeral, well, it was a blur to me. I loved Grandpa so much I just kind of went through the movements. We knew that we hadn't seen the last of whatever had taken Grandpa and that it would probably be back for another one of us. And then there were the dreams. I started having nightmares on my Grandpa. Dreams that felt more real sometimes and, well, actually been awake. And then we started hearing the voices, the pecking on the house, the knocking on the doors, the scratching at the windows, the growls. It was almost too much to bear. And then Grandma said, it's time to end all this. Grandma the next day called all the family, and we gathered as a family, determined to put an end to the terror that had consumed our lives. We knew it wouldn't be easy, but we were united in our resolve. Grandma said, set fire to the fields and burn the evil corn. We set fire to the cornfields, watching the flames engulfed the twisted evil plants. As the fields burned, the strange occurrences ceased, but you could hear the yelps and the whines of the sound like dogs caught up in the corn, and sometimes it was almost unbearable, Mike, to even listen to. It was sound like a dog actually just burning to death. We set the fires from all four corners and let them grow into each other. There wasn't much of a room for escape because it went up fast, it was a windy day, and it burnt through hot. We stood together watching the flames reduce the fields to ashes, and we knew that we had reclaimed our farm, our family, and our lives. We had faced the unknown and emerged victorious. We did know that we must have at least hurt one, as whenever the fields were burning we heard the screams and as we looked. We saw, but could not tell, something on fire running through the corn as fast as it could, probably six to seven foot tall, and it ran off toward the creek. And I just remember thinking, one for Grandpa. But even now, I can't help but wonder if we truly defeated the evil or if it's just lying dormant waiting to come back when we plant the new seeds. 
Grandma says if it comes back when we plant the new seeds, we will do one last burn. And from now on, these fields will be baled for hay and will no longer produce the corn. The, cu the children, she says, is more important than the corn and our safety. If we have to cut mow them, then we'll mow them. But I want you all to know that these things live in these darkest places. For some reason, they like areas where they can hide and get close to your house. If there's tall grass to your house, they'll use that to get up and to listen to you or watch you or whatever they do. Maybe even ambush you. Hope you all enjoyed our little encounter from Ohio. It's a very sad encounter for us, but I hope that it saves somebody someday. Grandpa should have never went into that field at night. But you know how old timers are. It was their land, and they wasn't afraid to go on it. Thank you for sharing my story, Darren Hawkins. You're welcome, Darren. And the reason I said his last name is he said he wanted his name announced. So, Darren Hawkins, thank you so much for sharing your encounter. It was a very, very uh, sad encounter. Um, I'm sorry about your grandpa. I hope everything stops at your farm. And um, these things, I have read a lot about them being in cornfields, and I think it's because they can hide. Everybody, thank you so much for listening to this video. If you enjoyed it, please smash the like button. Let us know that you're enjoying these videos to let us know you want us to put even more out, more content, and we will do that. Thank you so much for watching, and always thank you for your support. We'll see you on the next one. Keep your head on a swivel, and don't end up something's dinner.